<laughs> what is up, Wholesale Tamilian family? Today, we're, um, I'm bringing you guys uh, first subscriber, first wholesale deal interview. Now, Jacob actually closed his first wholesale deal two years ago. He's still in the game. So I'm going to let him share with you guys, obviously, his first wholesale deal, how he did it. Um, he's only 18, which is freaking mind blowing. All right. Two years ago, what? So he got to be 16. And then I'm going to have him share with you guys his story, how he keep on continuing and scaling his business to wherever it is today. I have no clue where his business is today, but we're about to find out. So put your thumbs together, smash that thumbs up. Help me welcome Jacob. What's going on, player? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to share my story because I feel like there's so many young people that want to get into this business. I feel like my story will motivate them and show them that they can really do it, you know? Um, bro, I don't know, man. I mean, it pumps me up. You know, when I was yeah. when I when I was 18, man, I was still working at a job making eight dollars and fifty cents an hour. Yeah, yeah. So you know? uh, let's talk about your first wholesale deal, man. So at that time, you're what, 16 then? Yeah, 16, almost 17. Like 17, just turned 17 when I closed my first wholesale deal. Um, and so basically, to get that deal, I was, you know, doing everything possible. I first went on YouTube and learned everything I possibly could. So I had a good understanding of the business because I didn't want to pick up the phone and talk to anyone if I didn't know what I was talking about. So first I had a full understanding of the business. And then I decided to pass out flyers to all the pre foreclosures and lates in my area. Yep. And I really, okay. okay. Uh, uh, Jacob, let's make sure that we let people understand the time frame. And yeah. a lot of people I think underplay YouTube, anything that you ever want to learn is on yeah. YouTube. You don't have to pay for any program. You don't have to pay for any course, right? Because everyone learned differently. But a lot of you, what you're doing is you're too lazy to put in the time to put the missing puzzle together because there's just so much, you know, there's just so much to learn and so yeah. much video out there, right? Yeah. And then you complain about people charging you and money and all that. Okay, now let, let's talk about the time frame. The time yeah. frame that you you learned from YouTube, how long did it took you to actually learn and understand? Uh, to learn and understand, I think I started, I started learning, I spent the time learning for like two months and I have multiple notebooks full. I was up till 3 a.m. every night, literally sweating, like freaking Dang, out like about this business, taking notes. And then after those two months, I started taking action and actually taking steps forward to get my first deal. And I feel like that's what a lot of people don't do. They don't just start. Mm -hmm. You got to start. And so, yeah, it took like two months of learning till I started taking action. And in total from from starting to learn to getting my first deal, it took eight months. And I feel like now though, I don't want to discourage people. I feel like now there's so much more out there on the internet that you can get a deal in under four months. I really believe it. So. Got you, man. So, okay. So it took you eight months. Now, for those of you who's watching this, it took me six months. And a lot of you are DMing or commenting and say, Hey, Kong, I've been at this game for 30 days, bro. I can't get a deal. Or, hey, I've been at this for like, you know, two months and I can't get a deal. Dude, should I move on to something else? You know what I say to that, bro, Jacob? I say, come on, man. No, shit. Go, get a J <laughs> Dude, go get a J-O-B. That's yeah. probably better for you. Because any business, I don't care any business you start. Yeah. There's no such thing as a get rich quick. There's, there's no such thing as success overnight. If everybody, if anyone trying to plant that or trying to sell you that, they're selling you something. Because entrepreneur starting a business, especially from ground zero, like zero, zero connection, zero dollar, right. zero experience, zero knowledge. Like most people don't tell you the back end. When I got into real estate, I know nothing, right? So it takes you time to learn, to educate and get and kind of get up it and get going. And so God, we're just you, you normal know? people. We're just normal people. We, we don't have luck. We're not lucky. We create our own luck by putting in hard work. We create our own luck by hard work. So. I love that, bro. Okay. Now let's talk. Uh, so, okay. So eight months until you got your first deal. Yep. Let's talk, let's talk about your first deal, dude. Okay. So I was passing out those flyers, you know, I was, if, if they weren't home, I was knocking on the door. If they weren't home, I would tape it to the door. I put it in their mailbox, whatever it was. I made sure I got the flyer there for them. Never got a phone call. So, okay. So, uh, so Jacob, where do you get the flyers, dude? I just went on a PowerPoint because you can make like a foldable on there, like a pamphlet nice. and then put, you know, I buy houses fast for cash. We pay all closing costs and commissions as is condition. Call me and like some other stuff on there. And then I just printed out like a thousand of them. And I went around with my friends driving around 
and just put them at every pre foreclosure and late in my whole area, which a pre foreclosure means they're delinquent on their mortgage payments. So I went doing that. Didn't get a phone call from that at all. Did not now, work. now, how, now, how did you know that 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 house is in pre foreclosure? Yeah. So I used the MLS. I had MLS access, and I went in and and sorted for all the pre foreclosures and lates, and then pulled out the list. Okay. Now at 16 or 17, how do you get access to the MLS? You just reach out to a realtor. I mean, you build a relationship with a realtor, you know, tell them that you're going to, it's, it's really all how you carry yourself. You know, you can build a relationship with anyone at a young age. And so really I just presented myself well to them, told them that there would be future business, which there has been uh, as far as listings. And I was able to get MLS access. So nice, and, you know, a lot of people have a realtor in their family or a family friend, and so you can find someone to give you access. Awesome, man. So you guys, you're watching this. I want to let you know that there is no sales pitch. I'm going to dig everything I can from Jacob and give it to you guys all for free. So you can just copy, duplicate, put in the W-O-R-K, man. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you get access to the MLS. That's how I got access to the MLS. I'm not a realtor. I don't have a license, network, connections, and then always bring value to the table. Yeah. Right? Okay. Now that you got access, you pull up uh, all the pre foreclosure. You went to the you, yep. you you did the PowerPoint, yep. right? I got nothing from it, and so then the next thing I decided to do because I realized, you know, driving around town, I wasn't reaching as many people as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. So I decided to buy a list. I bought a list of high equity, fifteen years plus residents for my whole county, which was like, too much data originally. But I then. Um, called every day for two months uh, for like five, six hours a day, making cold calls myself. Um, and then I got Wait. very close to getting a few deals. I went on a few appointments, but still no one would sign. And, uh, you know, at those points in my journey, I felt like giving up, you know, there was a, through eight months of trying every single day, there was many points where I was like, felt like I wasn't making any ground and I felt like giving up, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, for me, man, six months in, people ask me all the time. So, Colin, were, were there time where you feel like you want to just give up? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Right? Yeah. Dude, I mean, listen, man, I'm not God. I'm, we're, we're just regular human beings. Whatever yeah. you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, I experienced the exact same thing when I first started. You want to quit. You, you want to let go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just getting to the point where it's just too much, right? Yeah. But that's what separates between the winner and the loser. Yeah, winner, man, we just keep on going, right? Yep. You got to understand this tough time don't last. Only tough people do play you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. And yeah, when I felt like giving up, I just remembered, you know, it starts with a dream and you owe it to yourself to make those dreams come true for yourself and your family. And so I kept pushing on and on because I knew I needed to make this happen and I knew I could. But next, I realized that I needed to hire people to make the cold calls for me because I created too many leads for myself that I didn't have the time to do the follow-up and produce the new leads. Okay. So I hired two cold callers and okay. that way. Okay, Jake, Jacob, we're going to break this down, man, because yeah. I want to get this info from you. So you, you mentioned you pulled a list. Where did you pull that list, bro? I pulled that list from uh, Cole Information. A lot of people don't use it, but- Cole? Yeah, no one knows it. Most real uh, realtors use it. Um, uh, Could you spell that? C O L E. So it's partner.coleinformation.com slash like unlimited. And you, it's like you can, it's like $7.95 for the year, and then you can pull unlimited records in your state. Um, you know, it's not the highest quality data, but you know, on a budget, it works. And when you're doing a lot of volume and you have a lot of cold callers, it works out well. So, so now here's my question. Now, here's my question to you. Is it, is it similar to a uh, prop stream? Um, prop stream, you can only pull 10,000 a month for a hundred dollars. Um, this you can pull, you know, millions of records in your state. Um, exactly. but is it similar price wise? Yes, it's similar, even though you can get a lot more data. Um, but is it, I feel like prop stream can be saturated because everyone new in the game uses it. So, you know, I don't know. Not many people know about it. So that might be the good thing. But now you guys gotcha. know. So that's good. Gotcha, bro. Okay. So you pull a list of how big is the list? It was like a hundred thousand. And I could have pulled more, but I just pulled a hundred thousand at first. I used Mojo Dialer. I wish I used a different dialer to start, but you know, it worked well. It was simple to use. So okay. 
and you, so you mentioned you hire v, uh, VA, right? Or what? Yep, two, two cold callers, yep, from the Philippines. Okay, so what does the VA stand for? Uh, virtual assistant. Okay, and where do you hire these VA? I hire them at thecallgenius.com. That's what I use. Call, C-A-L-L? -L. Yeah, genius, G-E-N-I-U-S. Got com. it, got it, okay. And how much you pay per hour? seven dollars an hour and they're fully trained and everything and managed so you just got to check in every once in a while make sure they're doing what they're saying they're doing and then you know it works out well it's kind of so, off the plate so so okay so jacob i mean call genie is it like uh what's the what's the like so so do you so do they just work do they work for a call center and you just yeah. hand them a script yeah, it's a 300 seat call center, like it's a big one. And so I would send them a script, but I also wanted to build on top of that script. So I created a 10 packet manual because obviously it's their center. I can't be, you know, one on one with the agents Correct. training them. So I created a 10 page packet going on rebuttals and, you know, building rapport yep. and, you know, all that type of stuff. So, ba so basically this is like pet life. Say that again. So, 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 so call genie is kind of like pet life. Yeah. But okay, so now when they pick up the call, because with Pat Life, they pick up the call and they say, hey, hey this is Pat, right? Everybody's Pat. Yeah. Not so, like that, so with Call Genie, how does that work then? Yeah, they just, you know, pick up the phone. They say they're from, you know, uh, we don't give out our company name on there. They say they're from sure. National Home Buyers. Yep. And then they say, hey, are you interested in a cash offer for your property? It won't take Got much it. of your time, you know? Got it. Okay. Keep going, bro. And so, yeah, I did that. Now I was just focused on following up with the leads that they gave me, which was very important. Now I was mainly focused on chasing after that deal with the motivated leads and getting closer to getting my first deal. So then I did that for like six months, following up, following up, went on like 15 more appointments, driving all over town, wasting my time, not getting nothing signed. And then finally I got one signed in uh, Gilbert on a golf course, but the worst thing ever happened. So it felt amazing that I got it signed. But then when I walked a buyer through the property, he pointed out some foundation issues that I did not notice. And when I brought up the foundation issues to the seller, they said, um, they said, actually, yeah, we have a bid for $17,000 to repair the foundation. Those numbers completely killed the deal. You know, that hidden unknown repair cost that the seller was hiding from me killed the deal. I felt broken. This was the point where I literally contemplated giving up, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, my first signed contract was a complete failure and it broke. Wow, okay. So, okay, Jacob, uh, before, uh, you, you keep on going, bro. My other question to you is at seven. So at 17, you're probably still in high school, right? Yep. So well, where do you get the money, man? Where do you get the money to pay for these VA? Yeah. So also I had the time because I was doing online school and then where did I get the money? Always growing up, I always saved my money. If my friends went to the gas station to buy Gatorades and whatever it was, I was cool with a water or whatever it was. You know what I mean? I was not trying to spend money on stupid things. So I always saved my money, birthday money, put it away. And then also I ran a whole business with offer up, uh, flipping like random junk and stuff. So I, what I did first was sell everything in my house that my parents didn't want that no one wanted to use. And I got to keep all the money. And then what I did is I made a partnership with my grandma and grandpa to sell all the stuff in their house they didn't want. And I'd split the profit. And then I made a partnership with my grandma's handyman. He had a garage full of stuff, bunch of tools and all this. Partnered with him, 50-50 split, sold everything in his garage. And then I would partner with my friends, sell their old like Legos and toys. And I would save all that money. I never spent any money. Bro, I still don't barely dude dude man respect it almost felt like you were born to freaking be a uh an entrepreneur dude yeah my family my grandma would always say when i was little like you're gonna be something special and i you know good I for you bro good you. for you bro now jacob um how much money did you how much money did you save up when, when you started uh wholesaling bro yeah, so I had $5,000 when I nice. first got into real estate. And then I partnered on a flip originally and doubled my money learning the process from start to finish. So once I stepped into the game of wholesaling, I had $10,000 to my name and I put it all on the line to make this happen. So, oh, okay, hold on a second, man. <laughs> hold on a second. Because I, I want people to understand the story 
and the journey. Because a lot of people only see the now and not seeing all the things that has to go through to get to the point of them starting a business, right? Yeah. And actually grow that business. So, okay, man. So when you discover real estate, you had $5,000. Yeah. Okay. You partner with somebody on a flip. Yeah. Let's talk about that briefly. Yeah. So how did I go down? So I partnered with my dad on a flip and okay. I put $5,000 in and, um, I, you know, he found the deal direct to seller and he thought it'd be a good idea for me to do it. Currently in our time, our family was going through, like my whole family was split up and it was horrible, a horrible time in my life. So it was a good opportunity to be with my dad, help him get better and help see, bring my family back together and have them all see eye to eye while being with him every day. So I put $5,000 in, I learned the paperwork from start to finish, you know, buying the deal, right? Closing on the deal at title. And then, you know, everything. And back then we used, I used to do a lot more work than what I do now. When I flip houses, uh, I pay people to do everything. But back then I did a lot like painting baseboards, painting walls, you know, putting carpet in, like I do everything. And, uh, I, I did that and learned all the paperwork and doubled my money. That flip took like four months, four or five months. Cause we, we weren't, you know, doing it you know, extremely fast and on a time sure, sure. crunch and all that. So I realized I found out about wholesaling because I saw people online doing it. I was like, oh my gosh, in the amount of time it took us to do that flip, I could have done 10 wholesales and made triple the money. So that's where my mind completely shifted. And then next minute I'm up till 3 a.m. every night researching how to get into wholesaling. And gotcha, then, man. Yeah. Dude, bro. I mean, dude, I got to give you a lot of respect, man. I mean, you know, first of all, at a jump, at a young age, not going out, having fun, drinking, partying, clubbing, drugs, yeah. all of that, you decided, dude, to take a, a freaking a route that 97% of teenagers don't take. Yeah. And that's why they end up they end up where they're at, waking up at 30, waking up at 40, still going to that J-O-B, man, and yeah. regret that, hey, you know what, I wasted 20 years, 10 years of my life away just doing dumb stuff. So good for you, man, a huge Thank respect. You. And then also to on your first contract sign, it falls through. Most people probably already gave, like I said, most people probably, most people don't, don't, don't last in a business within six months. Within yeah. six months, most people are done. And most people get their first deal and it'll take them another year or two years to even get another one. And then went on to do no deals and then started something else. You guys got to understand, you know, an entrepreneur running your own, you know, starting a business from ground zero, it's not easy, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about now your first deal gone. Now let's talk about the actual deal. How do you found the seller? Yeah. So I went after that contract canceled, I went back to doing what I was doing, you know, having the cold callers, cold call and follow up with the leads. It clearly was proven that it worked. I got a signed contract, but a hidden foundation issue ruined the deal. So it was proven that it worked. So I went back to what was working and then just kept following up with leads, following up with leads, went to a few more appointments, did not get the contract signed. But then I finally found the motivated seller that you know would consider a reasonable price, and it was in a great area. He wanted 440, and I thought I needed to be around 410. So I set the appointment with him, and I went out to the property. It was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I, you know, I, I told him, you know, maybe if I come out, maybe I'll be able to give you a little bit more. Went out to the house. The property needed a full remodel, everything. It was outdated. But, you know, when I was there, I didn't realize how close this one comparable was to the property. One comparable sold for six seventy five, dollars like three houses down on the other side of the street. The other comparables were about uh, like high, like low sixes, high fives. And so it, it was kind of tight with those comps. But this six seventy five dollars was literally right across the street, basically, and it made it a deal. So I was like, you know what? Let's meet at 430 as the price. And I got it under contract. So, and okay, Jacob. So when you go and meet the seller, bro, because a lot of people are having a tough time, especially starting at, at, in a young age, get over the fact that, does the seller say anything about how, how young you are and where you're going to get this money, man? It's like 430 G, bro. Yeah, they say that. But, but you know, I wear a suit when I, I would wear a suit when I would go. Okay. And, you know, you just got to convince them. It's, it's possible, but you gotta, you know, that's what the eight months was for. The eight months was for preparing me to be able to step in front of somebody and actually get it signed by building my confidence, building my speaking techniques, my tonality and how I carried myself. 
And, you know, that transferred over in person and those prior, you know, 15, 20 appointments, I got enough practice to where I was prepared and they, the rebuttals of you're young, I was able to shoot past, you know. So how, so you did have sellers saying that, Hey, you're age why you're young, right? Yeah. So how do you overcome that Jacob? Yeah. So I would have proof of funds and basically I would just say, you know, that, that I work with my family and, and where do you get, so and they now, weren't where, able to make it basically. Gotcha. And, and I I've been doing the business with my family for a long time. Okay. And, um, and you know, he, they weren't able to make it. So I'm here, you know, smart bro. Okay. So now my question is, where do you get the proof of funds? The proof of funds. So there's multiple ways to get proof of funds online. You know, they're obviously not real, um, but there's ways online. I forget the website, but that's basically what I would do. I'd get a proof of funds letter from online. Um, Smart. Okay. So a, a lot of you, what you, a lot of you are running to hit Kong proof of funds, proof of funds. Listen, when you, most of the time, when you do directly with the seller, just like Jacob said, if you carry yourself, you come in with confident, you know, if you know what you're talking about, if you can control the, the conversation, the phone call, whatever it is, usually they don't really question you, but let's just say that they do question you proof of funds. You know, just Google, just Google proof of funds. There's a bunch of company out there that will provide yeah. you proof of funds letter. No problem. And I was okay. about to say that too. People, you if you carry yourself the right way, they really don't ask you these questions. Yep. Like they don't ask for it. They just yep. trust. Correct. Yeah. Got you, bro. Okay. So the ARV of the property is 675. Yep. And I got it for 430. Nice, bro. Now, what was the seller? Uh, 430. So what's what's the seller situation? The seller situation, they bought a new house, a new build, and they wanted to move. Um, oh. So that was it. And they didn't want to fix up their house. Gotcha. Wasn't okay. Not too, not too distressed, not too motivated. Like there wasn't crazy, you know. Reasons. How much work, uh, how much work did the house need? Well, you know, to get the 675, at least 80,000. 80,000. You know, man, out of all the interview, I feel like this one is more of a clubhouse interview. You, yeah. I like uh, Jacob, uh, do you have a clubhouse, bro? Yeah, I love clubhouse. You, you, you do? Dude, I don't yeah. know why, but clubhouse is just so boring to me, dude. Really? That's what my that's what my dad says. I don't believe but, I, but, I don't but the thing is, But the thing is, I, you know, it, it seems like uh, everyone has said it that it's going to blow up. Yeah. Have you tried it while driving, listening to it while driving? I no, like no, because dude, because when I drive, dude, I like to, I like to listen to uh, Chinese music, bro. Ah, yeah. I like to, I like to listen to the love song, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like so, it. <laughs> so, the, so for those of you, if you like, if you like more of this kind of interview where, where we just kind of basically, basically we're just talking, it's not really an interview. I feel like that's, it, it's a little bit better that way. So if you like it, comment down below and let me know. Okay. So the rehab is 80,000. You lock it on the contract for four thirty. So what? So what's the earnest money between you and the seller? A uh, hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yep. Okay. Now, did the seller question that or or or, or no. anything? No. Okay. Usually don't. A lot of sellers don't even know what earnest money is. <laughs> Correct. So, um, unless then, you, unless 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 you're the wholesaler uh, that brings it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, put a hundred dollars earnest money and then I went to sell the deal. I put it all over Facebook. Wait, 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 I, wait, hold, 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 hold on a second. How long do you lock it up on the contract for? Uh, I think the close was like 25 days. Okay. Maybe, so maybe you, sell. okay. So you, so you had a 25 days closing a hundred bucks. Now, once that contract is signed, dude, what do you do next, bro? Yeah. So I made connections along those eight months with some, you know, decent sized you know, players in town that, that, you know, buy a good amount of properties. So I had, you know, a handful of people to text about the deal. And then I also, you know, obviously put it all over Facebook, but one of my good friends, I texted the deal to him uh, and he wanted it, showed him the property and he offered me 460 for it. So I, I took that 460, got it under contract, the assignment contract signed and, you know, the, the transaction process from there on to the close was super easy. And I got paid thirty thousand dollars and i could not believe it it changed my life i could have made more on the deal too now thinking back i undersold it but you know you know that deal was meant for a reason so of I course man everything back bro congrats dude 30 dude thirty thousand on your first wholesale deal bro that's pretty dang good dude at what uh were you 17. 18 at the time or 17? No, 17, 17. Oh, oh, so I, I got another question. I 16 chasing after it closed my first deal at 17. dude i got another question for you 
well, obviously for you know obviously you understand that you have to be 18th wholesale yeah so how did you get away uh so yeah i just was an llc with my parent mm. so on an, i was a member of an llc and so I, I actually made a YouTube video about this because people don't know. And it got a lot of views because I there's a ton of kids out there that want to do yep. this. Super easy. You just, you know, be a member of an LLC with someone over the age of 18. Doesn't have to be a parent. It could be a friend. So that's yep. how. And then, um, um, so, okay. Do you have the attorney drop the LLC contract or, or, or did you go on a website? Google, just Google. Just like, okay. Um, did, you use, uh, did you use a uh, legal zoom bro? No, I, I just used incorporate.com. Incorp. Okay. Yeah, there's like a bunch that you can create an LLC with. How much do they charge you? Uh, I was f no more than 450 bucks. Okay. And then so, I think it's like 200 a year to renew. Yeah. So uh, same thing. I think with legal zoom, it's, it's about 200 or, or, or 400, something like that. All right. Um, okay. Now the buyer, dude, did the buyer buy, buy the probably sight unseen or, or what? No, I walked him through it. I okay. But the and sellers weren't even there. It was their daughter there. So it was super easy. Like I wasn't scared at all. Okay. So got you. Through. Got you. Now, how much, how much, did, how much of a deposit did the buy put down? 5,000. 5,000. Yep. Man, there's a lot of good stuff. There's a, got a lot of good stuff in this interview. Okay. So buyer drop off 5,000 and how quick was the closing with the buyer? Um, it was like, we went to the close, the regular one set with the, it was, uh, like 25 days or sooner, but we just went on the 25 days because they weren't, they didn't move out any quicker. They didn't want to. So I see. Gotcha. So, same month, locked it up, got paid the same month. Gotcha, so. bro. Okay. So now my next question to you is, um, how do you, okay. So the 5,000, the non, the non-refundable that the buyer drop off. Mm -hmm. Does does the buyer knows that you made thirty thousand? Yeah, he knew. Okay, because yeah. I that was a problem too. I was using an assignment contract back then that said, you know, the fee on it, which you don't have to do. And then yeah, so that was a but but you know he's he was a friend so yeah I didn't, yeah. So now my question for you, Jacob, because a lot of people ask me, so come when your assignment fee is so big, I mean. Aren't you afraid that the buyer is gonna be like, hey, what's going on here? Why are you making so much and all that? How do you now, now knowing what you know now, how do you go around, yeah, around that? Yeah, title will do a one-sided HUD or a blind HUD where the seller only sees their side. So they only but, see their side and your side and the fee is not shown. With a right, well, the thing is, so, okay. So my question to you is, have you ever had buyers that, um, have you ever had a big big assignment fee where you assign it to the buyer and the, pro, uh, the buyer was having issue? I guess my question is, how do you go how do you go around that? So when, you know, when you're trying to do an assignment and let's just say it's a $40,000 assignment. Yeah. So if you don't put, if you don't put the fee amount on your assignment contract, then they won't see it. You'll just put the total purchase price, right? Um, the total purchase price for the underlying contract. You won't say fee, uh, fee plus underlying contract equals total purchase price. Just leave out the fee being shown. And then they will they will know at the end what they'll be at the closing table by, by the time they find out. So they're not really going to back out then, you know? Right. And the thing is, that's why too, is I have my buyers drop off a very large non-refundable. And typically, you know, before that, um, you know, my average assignment fee is between about 20 to 25 G's, right? So for me, anything, it, it depends on, it depends on, uh, Every single area is different and obviously it's depending on the buyer. But for me to do a double closing, typically, you know, my assignment fee would have to be, you know, at least forty thousand dollars or more. Yeah. But now how I get around without doing a double close and doing a straight assignment, it's just like what Jacob said. I just put in the purchase price and then I'll send it into my title company. And then my title company, and then once the buyer drop off that non-refundable deposit, then I send the buyer an addendum telling them how much the assignment fee is because with my title company they have to the buyer has to acknowledge how, how much the assignment fee is otherwise they're not going to be able to obviously move forward to close on it now at this time buyer already drop off an unrefundable so if they, if they back out guess what right uh they're gonna lose it now they have skin in the game that's why i tell you guys to make sure that your buyer regardless you know whatever it is you make sure that your buyer drop off um a large non-refundable Three to uh, five. That's pretty much three it. Three to five thousand, no matter what. That's right. That's right. So, um, 
Jacob, I mean, now uh, we're wrapping this up, man. So for those that are starting out, right, that, that are going through the journey, man, what are some what are some things that you, oh, you know what, man? I want to ask, so what is your current business now? Yeah. So my current business now, I took that 30,000 and I put it in. I went from two to five cold callers, kept doing the same thing. And then, you know, as you scale, I hired acquisition managers and stuff like that because I was getting too many leads. Currently in my business, I have three acquisition managers. I had five, two. I was just hiring, so I got rid of two. But I have three acquisition managers, 30 cold callers, two virtual assistant admins, like admins. And yeah, that's basically my business right now. So how much, so how much time, so how much time do you spend on your uh, hosting along business a day now? Um, you know, still a lot because I'm not where I want to be, you know, 10 hours a day, eight. Okay. 10, and, uh, uh, Jacob, do you mind sharing with the, uh, do you mind sharing? Uh, so how much, so how much are you doing a month now? Consistently six figures every month. This, this okay. month was our first $200,000 month, which was <laughs> amazing. 18 Good. years old, man. Good for Crazy. you. Good. Oh my God, dude. This is mind blowing, man. Cause doctors, lawyers, you know, people that spent eight years in college, dude, yeah. don't, don't, don't even make that much. Don't even make 200,000 yeah. a year, you know, maybe a hundred thousand, maybe 120. Right. And then what they do is guess what, dude, they go to then now all the money they make from whatever it is, engineer, doctor, lawyers, take that money, start paying off their uh, student loan debt. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, 18, bro. That's mind blowing, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Bro, absolutely, blessing, man. Congrats, man. dude. Good Thank for you, you, bro. So what are, J Jacob, what are some tips, some feedback that you can give to the people, man? Yeah, tips. You know, if you're not starting, you know, it's you versus you. You're the thing holding you back. You got to go for it. And there's so much information on YouTube. I make a ton of YouTube videos teaching you, you know, how to get into the business as well. And so if you're not doing that, then you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself. There's plenty of online for free to learn and start taking steps towards your first deal. And as you start taking those steps, you will start to see things that work. And then you'll realize that this is real and that you can actually do it. And, you know, just go for it. You know, you deserve it to yourself to become successful. And I think anyone can do it in this business. I'm living proof, you know. Good for you. Good for you, man. Well, listen, man. It's not your fault that you were born poor. Listen, man, but it's your fault if you stay poor, especially now that you know me and Jacob, right, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> and, and the thing is, a lot of you, what, what you do is, listen, man, when you're about to give up, I want you to remember this in your head, me saying this. When you're about to give up, you're not just giving up on yourself, but you're giving up on your families. You're giving up on the people that depend on you to succeed because they gave up on, your, they gave up on their dreams. So mm -hmm. you got to make it happen. Remember yeah. that when you give up, you're not just giving up on yourself, but you gave up on the people that depend on you to succeed. And let me tell you, man, the six months that I have to go through, that's what carry and pushes me through because my wife depending on me to succeed, to give you know, us the life that we deserve, dude. And I just kept that in my mind and I just keep pushing and keep going, man. 100. Anyway, Jacob, man, so how can people get a hold of you and connect yeah. with your player? So Jacob Blank on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Jacob Blank. Just look me up, Jacob Blank, B-L-A-N-K. I put out a bunch of content just like you, trying to teach you guys how to get in this game because I want to impact a lot of, you know, a lot of the youth and get them into this business because, you know, college is not the only option. So connect with me and learn and make Good. some money. <laughs> yes, girl, we did that money. Love it, bro. So I'll make sure I put Jacob links all uh, down below. Once again, you guys, if this video does add any value to you, please show my guests some love. Boom, smash that thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Wholesale to Million family. Be sure to, boom, smash that subscribe button. Jacob, thank you so much for your time, bro. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care, bro. Ciao.